I'm Denise Scratchin. I'm a senior branch manager at the Blue Ash Branch Library, and I've been with the library for 30 years. When I was 17 years old uh, in high school, a lot of my classmates were deciding what they wanted to do with their lives. Um, during that period, there were lots of commercials for the Army. Um, be all you can be, get more done before 5 a.m., um, and more than others do all day. And I wanted to serve. Um, I kind of liked the grit that I saw in the commercials. It appealed to me. Uh, I wanted to go to college and I wanted to make sure that I could do that as independently as possible without causing any financial burden to my parents or my family. Um, and I knew that it would give me a certain level of strength um, to just kind of persevere throughout life. And it really did. This was in 1987. So I actually I actually started in the military um, when I was 17 years old uh, because I was underage. The recruiter had to come to my parents and they basically had to sign all types of paperwork and documents uh, saying that it was OK for me to serve. So I started um, in my unit in December of 1987 and I graduated high school in 1988. None of my classmates or people that I knew directly went into the military. I did have uncles who served. I had uh, one uncle that served in the Korean War and another uncle that served in World War II. Well, the Army used to have these commercials about helping to pay for college um, and the amount of money that you would get uh, when you finished your training to go into college if you needed it. Um, and it was very active and I was a pretty active, you know, young person. Um, I worked part time. Um, I took Taekwondo when I wasn't working and uh, also volunteered. So I like the activity that was kind of depicted for the people that were in the army. And that was like the commercial that I really saw the most growing up uh, in high school for the military. So. Um, the unit that was closest to my house was the 377th Military Police Unit, and the MPs trained at that time at Fort McClellan in Anniston, Alabama. Um, and I was fortunate because my grandmother lived in Anniston, Alabama, and I spent lots of summers there. Uh, I knew that once I finished with all of my training, I would be able to do my monthly drills as a reservist at the 377th Military Police Unit um, on Seymour Avenue in Roseland, like, in, near Roseland. Well, the military police, they dealt with security, securing perimeters, um, going in and making sure that areas were safe, um, deciding, you know, who was allowed entry into what areas. Um, I worked actually in a motor pool as a clerk, um, and when I finished um, my years, I was a sergeant, and I also helped to train, you, you know, new recruits that came into our unit um, with the duties of, like, ordering supplies and making sure we were ready uh, with the equipment, and I actually dispatched vehicles and, and worked in a motor pool. I was um, actually allowed to start drilling with my unit in December. So the drills were one week in a month. Um, and I continued to do that until I graduated from high school. Um, back then, our graduations were like early June. And then on June the 22nd of 1988, um, that was the first day that I, I left for training um, and, and, and took a bus uh, to Fort McClellan, Alabama. Eight weeks turned into about 10 or 12 weeks at Fort McClellan, Alabama. And then for my advanced individual training, where I learned how to um, take care of the, the paperwork and order supplies and dispatch vehicles, all of that was done at Fort Lee, Virginia. Um, and by the time my training was over, I got home like right before Thanksgiving in November of 1988. A total of eight years, it was what was called a six by two contract. Uh, you had to serve six active years and then two years were at the end were individual ready reserve. I actually did seven active years and one individual ready reserve year.
in a way, I wish I had have at least stayed in the reserves. I could have received a, an additional retirement check. Um, but you know, my focus was more like college and I didn't go in as like a um, someone to be commissioned, um, like uh, a ranking, higher ranking officer. Uh, I was in, an, ended up being a non-commissioned officer, but that was before I had all of my education. Now, had I got my education, I could have decided to go on, to go back into the military full time. But by that point, I was still trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I went to the University of Cincinnati, um, got my undergraduate degree in international affairs and a minor in Spanish. And then from there, I took like a 360 and was recruited. They were recruiting minorities for communication sciences and disorders. And I got a master's in communication sciences and disorders and became an audiologist. And I worked in Dayton Public Schools as an audiologist for about two years and decided I wanted to come back to the library because I started out in the library as a shelver. And um, between making money as a shelver and the GI Bill, I was able to complete my degree and enjoy the way I help people because I help people in a less invasive way uh, than as an audiologist. And sometimes as an audiologist, the news you delivered wasn't always good news with people who had uh, hearing impairments or um, other issues. Yeah, it's kind of where the money was. Um, so the way that I was looking at it, I got through my undergraduate degree uh, debt free and I would have been able to and did uh, get a master's degree debt free. Um, and I figured once you had that type of education, if you wanted to veer off into a different subject or do something different, you know, I could because I had gotten it. So. For me, I think the military just kind of set me up for success. Uh, it taught me, you know, that I could do what I kind of put my mind to. Um, and it gave me a certain grit that I felt like was needed that has helped me, you know, to be successful and where I am today. One of the things that I took with me was kind of take care of your squad. So uh, being in basic training, I was a squad leader relatively early on. That primarily had to do with the fact that uh, my drill sergeant was Puerto Rican. He spoke with a very thick accent and I was one of the few people who could understand him. Um, so I kind of received the charge of trying to translate and helping other people to understand what it was he was instructing us to do. I've taken, you know, from that experience to take care of the people that are looking up to you, um, to check on the people. Um, that you're kind of in charge of helping along and making sure that they're okay. Uh, another big lesson I learned was hurry up and wait. Um, that is kind of like one of the major models of the military. Always be ready to be ready, but be ready to wait as well, which taught me to be, you know, flexible and adaptable. Well, I'm not always like that. Um, not now, you know, I think as I've aged, I, I've changed a bit um, from when I was younger. So, yeah. Um, and if there are times when you I think you need to take things a little bit more slowly, it's more important to be safe, I think. And that's kind of a, a message that I relay to people, you know, we want you here, but I want you here safe. I don't want you to, you know, get in an accident or have something bad happen to you because you're rushing because we all have different seasons and different things that we go through that impact, I think, our ability to sometimes get up and be someplace right on time, early or late. Um, here's a fun, funny story. Uh, I think it's funny. Um, I try to always have an ability to laugh through situations, even when they're tough. And there was a time when uh, something had happened in the military. And this was in basic training at Fort McClellan, Alabama. And they used to, the drill sergeants would come and say, everybody on the strip, everybody on the strip. And what that meant was that you were supposed to get by your bunk and you were supposed to stand at parade rest until they told you at ease and, and share whatever information they had to share with you. Well, at the time that drill sergeant was calling everybody on the strip, 
I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth. So I showed up to my bunk with my toothbrush in my mouth and uh, the drill sergeant couldn't help but laugh. And that was the first time I ever saw him crack a smile and laugh. But he did make me do some push-ups with my toothbrush in my mouth. I think so. I mean, you know, recently at like our customer appreciation day event, customer appreciation day, I had a customer who was um, there at our Wonder Wheel that um, our um, branch supervisor review services has set up for that event. And um, when she spun the wheel, I gave her instructions for like what to do, um, like that it would take a while for it to stop and what she would get after she landed on something and answered the question about a staff member because they had to guess which staff was which person um, depicted on the wheel. And so at the end of that, we gave away um, some swag, which at the desk we had. CHPL branded pens and I handed her a pen and she told the my co-worker that was at the desk with me well you know you seem like you've been in the military because your your directions were very clear very explicit boom 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 and and here's your ink pen and we just kind of all chuckled uh, about that and um, I said well actually you're right um, well, I'm really thankful that I was able to serve my country. Uh, I'm very thankful for the training that I received. Um, and I'm very glad that it gave me a lot more grit uh, than I had when I was younger. So when I need to call upon that grit, I can. I know it's accessible and at the ready.